Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome. We're so glad to have you with us today for Jesus the Healer. Thank you for joining us. And I know this, you won't regret it because the Word always blesses us. Amen. And we so value that you love the Word, you honor the Word, and we're all learning to be better doers of the Word because it's not enough to know something. It's only what we do that matters in life. Amen. And so we want to not just have the knowing of the Word, we're going to move into the doing of the Word. Because what Jesus say, he said, it's the doer that's blessed. Yes. Not just being able to uh, repeat to somebody else what we heard, but to live what we, what we know. Amen. And so we have been on a new series and we're teaching on the greatness of God's power. And uh, we have a part to play in receiving the flow of God's power. So this is what we're, we're ministering about. Uh, go back, watch previous episodes that are in this series because we want you to hear what was said before. Um, we've been starting in Ephesians chapter one and you can turn with us, follow along in your Bible, take notes and uh, follow along with us as we read out of Ephesians chapter one. And let's start in verse 16. This is a prayer that Paul prayed for the people. And how many of you know, if the Spirit of God gave this prayer to Paul, it would bless us to pray this same prayer. So he said, I cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers. And this is what he prayed, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, would give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The knowledge of who? Of in Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. Who we are in Christ. And so he goes on and he says that the eyes of your understanding, or we could say this, the eyes of your spirit, mm -hmm. the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know, number one, what is the hope of his calling, mm -hmm. what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe. So Paul is praying that this would dawn on their spirit, these three things especially. So what does it mean, these three things that he spelled out? What does it mean that they would know what is the hope of his calling? What does that mean? Uh, we could say it this way, that they would know who they are in Christ. Right. Amen. Amen. Who they are because now they belong to him. Yes. We're not just who we are in the flesh, we're who we are in him. The second thing he prayed that they would know, uh, what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Well, what does that mean? That they would recognize and it would dawn on them what all belongs to them yes. because they belong to Christ. Right. Amen. What belongs to us? Every good thing that heaven has for us, healing, prosperity, peace, joy, victory, every good thing that you need to live uh, successful and happy and fulfill the plan of God in this life, God's already provided it. Amen. And it already belongs to us. And this is what Paul was saying, that it would dawn on the people what already belongs to them. It's not about getting God to give it. It's about us learning what's already been made ours. And then the third thing he, he prayed for them is that they would know what is exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe. Well, what does that mean? It means what that power can do through them, what that power can do for them what they can now do in the earth as a co-laborer with God because power is now our, um, available to us. Yes. Now, this, is, this third thing is really what we're focusing on in this series is that we would know what is exceeding greatness of his power. Look at this, to usward, yes. to us yeah, right. who believe. So it's not about getting God to give it. It's already 
to usward. It's already been given to us. It's already in our direction. Amen. And so we've been talking about these things. Uh, just to refer real quickly, uh, when Paul was saying that they would know the exceeding greatness of God's power, we see multiple adjectives used to describe the power of God. It's an exceeding power. Yes. When it says exceeding greatness of his power, it's an exceeding power. What's that mean? It exceeds all other power. That's right. It means all demon power, all human power, all mental power, all physical power, all financial power. Any other power that may be out there is no equal to this power because the power of God exceeds all other power. Um, it's a power that surpasses all other power. What's that mean? It's so far out in front that there is no other power that's a close second to this power. It's not just barely in front of all other power. It exceeds, it surpasses by far every other power. What's this mean? No other power is, is worthy to being its equal. No other power is worthy of being compared yeah, to the right. power of God. Yes. It ex and not only because it exceeds all other power, know this, it exceeds every need. Yes. Every need that you will ever have in life, ever face in life, there is more than enough power to deal with that need. So know this, um, that we must, we must magnify the power that's for us instead of magnifying what has come against us. Yes. Amen. Amen. What we're talking about is what we're magnifying. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. What that's we're true. meditating on and thinking about is what we're magnifying. Yes. So what do we need to be magnifying? The power of God, not magnifying opposition, not magnifying any tests or trials, yeah. not magnifying symptoms, not magnifying uh, any financial needs, mm -hmm. yeah. but magnifying the power that exceeds every need we'll ever face. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Then uh, Paul, in describing this power, he said it's an ex the exceeding greatness. So let's look at this. Uh, it's a great, the greatness of this power. Um, because God's power is greater, that automatically shows us every other power is lesser. Yes. That's right. That's right. Less than. Less than. Yeah. And uh, the enemy's power is less than. The power of the test is less than the power that's for you. Amen. Amen. The power of, of um, opposition is far less than the power that's for you. Right. Amen. Amen. And the wonderful thing about it is that this exceeding great power is already ours. We don't have to coerce God, talk God into sending it down. It's present in us. It's present with us. Amen. It's in our direction. And uh, notice this, it's to us, as Paul said, who believe. So we see this, our believing has to be added to the power to activate that power. And this is what Paul was praying in Ephesians, that when people would understand all that belongs to them because they belong to Christ. Right. All that can be worked, all that's available to them, yes. this, gr this exceeding great power that is in their behalf. When we understand this, why do people worry? Because they don't understand this. Right. It hasn't yeah. dawned on their spirit. Right. Now see, the Holy Ghost has to make this revelation to us, yes. right? Right. right? How does the truth and the knowledge of this become revelation to us because until it's revelation to us, we can't spend it. We can try to spend it, but it doesn't, until it's landed in us, we don't even really know and understand um, what's available to us. So Paul prayed that they would be given the spirit of wisdom and revelation about these things, who they are in Christ, what belongs to them and that power that works through them and that they can do things uh, that they never could do till the power showed up. Amen. 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 Once we get revelation of this, we're done struggling. Yes. Amen. Life, right. the struggle of life is removed. Right. Now listen to that. If we would understand everything that Paul was praying for, that these Christians would receive the revelation of, if it, become, if it will become revelation to us, struggle's over in your life. Struggle yes. is over. Yeah. 
Why? Because you know you don't have to struggle with a lesser power. The greater power has already overcome it. You quit worrying. Worry is nothing but struggling, trying to, trying to make something work that's already yours. Um, my goodness, we could go a lot of different directions talking about that. But once we gain revelation of this, um, you won't struggle with faith. Once you understand that these things are yours in Christ, you won't have to work to get faith for it. Because the understanding, see the word, uh, the faith comes automatically with the revelation of the word. Yes. When you have revelation of the word, the faith is there. Yes. The faith is there. Um, you, you don't pray and God, pray, God, give me faith. That's not how faith comes. How does faith come? By the word. Yes. Revelation yeah. Yeah. coming in. Right. Why? Because the faith lives with the word. Mm, you get good. that word in you, mm. faith is there. Right. Faith is there. Yeah. It's many times people say, I'm trying to get more faith. All you need is more revelation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Get more revelation. Yeah. You have to receive that revelation. You say, Pastor Nancy, how do these things become revelation to me? What's that mean? It, it seems real to you. It lands in your spirit to where you know it. No demon could pull you off of it. How does it become revelation to you? You meditate on it. You meditate on it. You speak these things. Father, I thank you that the greatness, the exceeding greatness of your power, it's in me. It's working for me. I thank you that it belongs to me now. I don't have to struggle to get it. I'm not trying to coerce heaven into giving it. It's already mine. You start meditating on it, talking about it like that. Then what happens? The Holy Spirit, who's the quickening power, he makes that thing alive and turns it into revelation in your spirit. You don't pray for faith for people. That's not how, that's not how faith comes. But Paul tells us, pray for people that they would get revelation. They get revelation. Faith is there. When people are struggling, they're trying to believe something that hasn't been made real to them yet. It's not been made revelation to them. So faith requires revelation to work. That's why it says faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God, hearing what God says. And when that, what God says to you becomes real to you, now you can spend it. Now you can spend it. Now you're not struggling, trying to get faith or trying to use your faith. You got it. Let's say this, if a student were away from home, they're at at college or at school somewhere and they're struggling because They're laying in bed at night going, I I don't have the money to pay my tuition that's due. And they're laying in bed and they're trying to figure it out. And then let's say this, they call their parent and the parent says, I'll wire the money in the morning to your account. It's all taken care of. See, if the student believes that, worry's over. He's not struggling to believe that anymore because revelation knowledge was revealed to him by the parent that says it'll be in your account tomorrow. He's not worrying anymore. He's not going to call up his friends and say, we need to have a prayer meeting. No, (laughs) no prayer meeting over that because he heard something. God gives us words to hear. And in the hearing, we say, I believe that. Believing is a choice, not a feeling. And if you'll choose to believe it, and you will say these things, they will dawn on you the truths, the layers of God's truth. I mean, there, it's so rich and deep, the truth of God's word, that it'll just keep dawning on you in a greater and greater way as you meditate on it, as you believe it, and as you put it in your mouth. Even before it seems revelation to you, talk it. Yeah. 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 That's right. Put it in your mouth, meditate on it, build it into your spirit. And as you do, the Holy Ghost will turn that into revelation to you. Now, no trouble spending it. You don't have to, you don't have to struggle with your faith to get it to work for you because you know it in here, not just knowing it, knowing it mentally makes your, it's still unspendable. 
Right. You have to know it in your spirit. Yes. Right. That's revelation. Yes. That's the revelation. The knowledge of it in the mind is good, but it's got to, it's got to dawn on your spirit. Yes. Yes. It's got to settle in your spirit. So faith comes by hearing what God says. Yes. Amen. Yes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when we hear what God says, even though your circumstances, your test that you may be facing says that's not true for you. No, I choose to believe what's greater. I choose to believe what God says in the face of what I may feel, in the face of what I may see about opposition. I choose, I choose to stay with what God said, believing it refusing to be swayed. Right. I don't have to talk God into his word. Mm-hmm. I don't have to talk God. What am I going to do? I'm going to say, God, I thank you that you're faithful to your word. Yes. This so is where you get miracles. Right. Father, I thank you that you're faithful to your word. So you don't have to talk him into his word. Right. He's faithful to it. And right. you know that. Amen. That means I'm done worrying about it. Right. Amen. I'm done letting the wrong conversation fill my mouth about my need. Oh, Amen. 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 So this is what Paul was praying for them. If, they, if this would dawn on people, that struggle's over. If it would dawn on us, the power that's exceeding and greater than any other power, addictions are no problem. Yeah, so true. They fall off. Yeah. When you understand there's a greater power than the power of an addiction. Yes. There's a greater power that's already yours than the power of a bad habit. There's a power that's greater than yours. It's called healing power. That's greater than the power of sickness and disease. There's a greater power called the power of peace. That's greater than, than uh, depression. Greater than worry. Amen. When you understand these things, it solves everything. When you understand who you are in Christ. Now, uh, revelation of this, of who you are in Christ and what belongs to you and the power that's yours because you're in Christ. Uh, Once this becomes revelation to you, the struggle is gone. I didn't say the opposition is gone. Uh Now pay attention to me. The devil will still oppose, but when you know something, you don't care. You don't care that you're being opposed because what you know is so much greater in victory than the opposition that comes against you. And you settle back on that word, refusing to be swayed from your victory because it's dawned on your spirit. And this is what Paul said, I'm praying this. If we can get this truth into people's spirits, that's why we're te- we teach this, getting this, pe- this truth into people's spirits. They can't, the Holy Spirit can't make it revelation to them till, till they hear it. Mm-hmm. You have to hear the word. Yeah, right. Thank God we can tell this to you teach it to you so that the Holy Spirit now has that word to make revelation to you. Amen. Amen. So uh, what's this mean? Christians that are struggling are invited into something. What is that? Greater knowledge, greater revelation. And if they'll come into that revelation, the faith will already be there. It's not about getting more faith. It's about settling down on the inside of you, making it absolute on the inside of you, the truth of what God says. God says that that he supplies all my needs. I refuse, I refuse to think something different. I refuse to speak something different. I refuse to be swayed by any other circumstances because I have settled down on the word. I set, I bring my thoughts in line with the word. I bring, uh, I bring my words in line with the word. I refuse to be drawn away from the word. That's how you fight the fight of faith, the good fight of faith. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hosea chapter four and verse six, six, God was speaking. He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. He didn't say they're destroyed because of lack of faith. If they had knowledge, they would have had faith. Um, It's the lack of knowledge. It's the lack of knowing and not just knowing something mentally but knowing it in here. Yeah. I love something that Dad Hagen, Kenneth Hagen was our spiritual father for decades. And I love something he would say. He'd say, if you hear the word preached, but it doesn't seem real to you. And he would say this, especially to people in his healing lines, because you know, some people have lived with pain and physical symptoms for years. And that was so real to them because it had lived with them for so long right. and they felt it. Yeah. And they would hear him say for the first time, 
Jesus took your infirmities and bare your sicknesses. People that had never heard the word preached on healing. So they had a hard time grabbing that because their sickness was so big to them. And so they would tell Brother Hagen, they would come to him sometimes after a service and say, Brother Hagen, I heard what you said, but it's, I'm having a hard time grabbing a hold of it. And you know, is that unusual? No. Remember what the man who had um, his, his son was epileptic, threw him down with seizures. And uh, the man came up to Jesus and said, I brought him to your disciples. They couldn't do anything. He said, and if you can help us do something, and Jesus said, it's not if I can do something, it's if you, you believe. Right. And remember what the father said, I believe, help thou my unbelief. What's he saying? My heart wants it, but my head is struggling. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. That's right. So that's what he's talking about. Every human will have to deal with that. Uh-huh. And this is what people would say when they were talking to dad Hagen. Maybe they've for years had this physical symptom and I've heard for the first time the healing word, my heart, I want that, Mm -hmm. but I'm struggling up here Mm -hmm. with that. I'm struggling to get past and I'm struggling for it to be real to me. I hear that and I see that it's in God's word, but it doesn't seem like it's real for me. And this is what Dad Hagen would say. Even though it may not seem real to you, keep saying it. He said, because if you will put it in your mouth Mm -hmm. that himself took my infirmities Mm -hmm. and bear my sicknesses, even in the face of pain, in the face of symptoms, even if it doesn't seem real to you, it doesn't seem like it's something that's joined to your life. He said, keep saying it because you can school yourself into faith. What's he saying? You can school yourself into the knowledge of that. If you will keep feeding that into you, Himself took my infirmities and bear my sicknesses. And the devil saying, that's not true for you. That's not true for you. Ignore what the devil says and keep saying it. Himself took my infirmities and bear my sicknesses. What's that mean? These symptoms, they're not mine because Jesus took mine. These belong to the devil and I'm giving them back to him. And I'm telling him, take his symptoms and go because these aren't mine. They're not living with me. And see, you talk to it, you meditate it. As you do that, as people will meditate on the word, that's how you take ownership of the word. That's how that word goes from living on the page to living in you is you meditate on it. When people are struggling to believe, struggling to receive from God what they need, they lack meditation. Mm. Meditation on the truth of the word. The truth of the word meditated on makes it spendable. Once you meditate on it and it becomes yours, now you can spend it. You know, if, um, if a neighbor said, I need to park my car in front of your house. I've got some things going. You know, there's going to be a lot of cars. Can I park my car in front of your house? Just because you can see their car in front of your house, and they may say, here are the keys in case you need to move it. I don't want it to get in your way. I'm leaving you the keys in case you need to move it. That's still not permission to take it out for a joy ride. That's not your permission to take it over and go through town Mm -hmm. and drive that car, right? Right. right. Well, what am I saying for you to use something? It has to be yours. (laughs) If you're using what's not yours, you're you're stealing. Unless they've authorized you to borrow it. Right? Right? Right. The word has to, you have to take ownership of it. Many times people get disappointed because they're trying to believe God when they haven't taken the time to meditate on that word and make that word their word. Take meditation, takes it off the page and makes it yours. Puts it in you. Makes it spendable. When people are struggling, they're trying to spend what they've not taken time to make theirs yet. Back up. Meditate on it. How do you meditate on it? Saying, this is mine. This word is true for me. Himself took my infirmities and bare my sicknesses. My God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory. Even when the mind's going on tilt, ignore the mind. There's no faith in the mind. Don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go there. You tell your mind what to believe. You don't take counsel from wrong thinking of the mind. 
you choose the words of God and you put them in your mouth and you keep saying it and you keep saying it. And as you do that, that's called meditation. And as you meditate on it, it will drive further and further down into the place where now you own it. Now you can spend it. So sometimes people think I'm confessing the word, but I feel overwhelmed. And they start frantically confessing the word in fear, trying to make it work. That's not how the word works. Back up and start feeding on that word, meditating on that word, meditating on it. Uh, Because it's not frantic confession of the word that makes it work. It's when that word has been taken ownership of and you say it from a place of ownership. Now saying it once and it's done because you owned it. You took time to own the word. Meditation takes time and you have to meditate on purpose. While you're driving down the road in your car, you can meditate on the word. While you're maybe doing running errands, cleaning your house, cleaning the garage, you can meditate on the word, call up a scripture. And uh, 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 you say, what, what word? Something that deals with your, your present need. Yes. Amen. Find, what's your present need? Meditate on something concerning your present need. Yeah. Something of God's word that answers your need mm-hmm. and put that in your mouth and say it over and over and over yes. and over. You're not trying to... If I could say this, you're not trying to talk God into something. You're driving the truth of it into ownership to where now it dawns on your spirit. Amen. Well, thank God for the word. We're we're learning how to take ownership of that word. Amen. We've been teaching out of my book called The Greatness of God's Power. We want you to get your copy and you can do that. You can go to our website at jesusthehealer.org and purchase your copy there and it'll be a blessing to you. Why? These truths have to be meditated on. One hearing, full faith doesn't come with one hearing. Full revelation doesn't come with one hearing, hearing over and over. And it'll be a blessing to you. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. In Nancy Dufresne's classic book, The Greatness of God's Power, she teaches how God wants us to know His power that is in our direction. It belongs to us. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. Come join us for our Jesus the Healer Crusade in Ontario, Canada at Promise of Life Church, August 25th through the 29th. For more information and to register, visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. Come expecting miracles. In Nancy Dufresne's book, A Supernatural Prayer Life, you will learn how prayer moves the plan of God forward. As we take time to pray in the Spirit, clarity of His plan for our lives comes. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. If you need prayer, please call our prayer line. We have trained ministers on staff who are ready to agree with you for your miracle. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible. This is Nancy Dufresne, and I want to extend an invitation to you to become a partner with Dufresne Ministries today. God bless you. Partnership helps with crusades held nationwide and abroad, printing and publishing of books and other materials, operational costs in TV and other media broadcasts. For more information and to sign up to become a partner, go to DufresneMinistries.org.